Hello everyone, this is You've Got 5 Options, a radio show where we prove that 5 is a magic number. Our experts will give you 5 tips on how to make your private or professional life better. We will solve your life challenge by giving you 5 different options to choose from. And our guests will answer 5 exciting questions while live on air. Tune in and feel the magic of five. Hello everyone, this is Marta. And this is Anna. And this is You've Got Five Options show. And today we are having in our studio yet again Anthony, and this is the second part of the Judgment Day. The Judgment Day because our anonymous stranger that we have solved challenge for back in April is actually here right now in a studio to tell us if we are good at giving options or not. Anthony, welcome again. Thank you. Although we haven't uh, physically moved, we are still recording. But thank you for being so patient and being with us for the second part. And uh, did you enjoy the first one? I did. Yeah. You did? Yeah. Can you hear I'm starting to lose my voice, though? Uh, maybe a little bit. Mm. It probably is because of this cold swimming that you are performing. <laughs> well, we need to talk more about that. Yeah. Uh, off air. Off air, please. And please keep your voice because we need to have you live in uh, half an hour. So all of you who would like to hear even more of Anthony, apart from our two episodes that you know about now, there is also a live show that you can find on our website, the5options.com, or on YouTube if you type in You've Got Five Options. Yes, definitely. And uh, you can also hear more music from Anthony on this one. Because uh, we discovered <clears throat> accidentally that he actually is a kind of like a renowned musician slash celebrity. In the smallest sense of the word celebrity, yeah. It's it's bigger than than, than what I... Z-list, yes. Yeah. The, the Z-celebrity, <laughs> but I, I don't believe so. I, I know that you have some strong fan club there, but I think I will ask you more about this on our live show. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. But we were talking about vision and goals and Anthony had a vision. I know that at the beginning it was a vision of I don't want to do what I'm doing, which is uh, good enough sometimes, mm -hmm. right? And then we finished uh, the episode with a really, really nice thought when Anthony told us how he actually came to the point where his vision crystallized and it had something to do with us, with our program, with sunrise and with cold water. Is it in a nutshell? That's pretty much in a nutshell. That's yeah. pretty much in a nutshell, yes. And I think, Marta, you really like that story. Yeah, that story was really cool. And I'm also, of course, looking forward to hearing about the goals part of it. Because that came out like a vision, you know, like mm -hmm. standing in front of the sun and asking yourself that eternal question of what should I be doing? So, yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing also about the goals part of it. Yes. So Did you set yourself any goals? No, not a, not a specific target. I mean, it, the, the initial... Well, no, I did have a goal. The goal was to make a decision about what I'm going to... what I want to do. But what I've bought for myself is time to develop. I need to do certain things and I want to do certain things. I want to develop the mastering business a bit more. I've got more time, but I don't want to do that to the point where I'm working flat out full time doing mastering. I still need to have time to do the other things and those are things that I'm going to be finding out as I start to you know have more time to create I mean there are some fundamental goals aren't there which is to to keep the roof over one's head and to um, to have food on the table and and hot water in the heating pipes and and this kind of stuff um, but no I, I wasn't looking for a specific target I want to you know, release a, a specific album at a specific point in time, or I want to we'll collaborate with a specific artist. No, I just, it was really probably much more open-ended as a goal than that, is to just create some space and time and flexibility to to find out those things as they come along. I have a question. Are you not really a target fan? You don't, because you sound like you don't like targets and goals. 
of course, I might be making an interpretation that is totally wrong. So that's why I'm really curious. It depends on where that target or goal comes from, doesn't mm -hmm. it? I mean, there's a difference between a, a goal and a target and a deliverable. Mm -hmm. I'm used to providing deliverables in my work, which means you've got to deliver a certain product or service at a certain time at a certain date at a certain quality and i think that's a bit different uh, well, that's not what we're talking about i'm happy to have those things um yeah i would be reluctant to having goals set upon me by somebody else outside of course yeah. that's why you are probably <laughs> self-employed self-employed and, and yeah. not doing the, the the corporate thing um but vision is a big big part of that and to have an open-ended vision is is okay as I think I'm comfortable yeah. with that. I don't think I, I don't think I need a specific a specific target or a specific goal. It's the, just this vision of having the time and the energy and the freedom to well, Anthony, explore don't, things. Don't so. knock it till you try it. I think you might actually you should actually see a life coach <laughs> 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 because a life coach will help you to set up your own goals. You do it by yourself. So you have this, you know, like think that someone tells me what to do. It's out, but you should just try it. I, I have a hunch you will. How now, would you define a goal? Now I would actually like not to respond because when I get a question about something that I thought it's obvious, I have a feeling that uh, I was thinking something wrong. So Marta, what is the goal? But I, I think that's one of those things that everyone can define differently. But for me, a goal is simply something that I want to achieve, an outcome I want to achieve. And of course, you can have someone else setting up goals for you. That happens a lot if you're employed by someone else. But if you set up a goal for yourself, you are simply defining what it is that you want to achieve. And if you have a vision, the goal is simply your way of getting into your vision, of bringing your vision to life. So goal so, supports the vision. Yes. So, for example, a goal, it could be starting your own business. That could be a goal. And you, if you add to it, when would you like to start it? And how will you know that you have actually started it? That's a goal. Sounds reasonable to me. What did you thought about stop complaining and start dreaming options? That was a big one. Yeah. Was that it? was a good one. Yeah, because I have done nothing but, well, not nothing but, but I've done a lot of complaining or feeling frustrated or, you know, saying oh, I'm tired, I don't have the energy for this or that, or I don't want to do this type of work or, you know, I want to do more of, you know, blah, 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 blah. How, it's tiring how long for, do you think? For other people and yourself to hear that after, mm -hmm. after a while. So how, how long do you think you were in this, let's say, complaining mode? Yeah, probably a couple of years. Okay, yeah. that's quite... Which is a significant amount of time, yeah, yeah. yeah. And okay. it's e but it's easy to do that, isn't it? It's easy to complain and it's easy to feel frustrated and to say you feel frustrated, but then it's not easy to make an actual decision about doing something about that or knowing what it is you should do about that. So those all of those things come together, um, which yeah. is where the, the goal and the visions. Uh, so I think it's easy to complain only at the beginning. And I think after a while you get so uneasy <laughs> with complaining all the time that you start wanting to change it right because at the beginning it's quite easy yeah you, you can just complain and you think that taking the decision is so difficult but have you ever been in a situation where you have had something you dislike for a very long time and it became so uncomfortable anymore that it's actually becoming more comfortable to take a decision to change it rather than keep on going in this mode of disliking and not being satisfied with what you do I don't know, because I think it's also, um, and maybe it comes from background as well, It's sometimes it's quite easy to just to keep complaining, but to keep going because you feel a sense of duty or obligation or fear that other alternatives or other choices you might make might take you down a road that you don't you don't know about and you know in 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 my situation i was I was definitely thinking about the sort of financial security of you know, rejecting a, an opportunity to do work for money <laughs> and turning away from that. And that's a, that's a big decision. But that didn't stop me complaining about, oh, I don't want to do this um, for a long time. So it's, it, but yeah, I think you're right. There, there comes a critical turning point where you have to do something about it. But again, it's, it's how, do you, how do you come to that decision? How do you frame that decision? What's the perspective on that decision? And I think, you know, I think, um, you know, one of the nothing in the situation changed, for example, and the the options that you 
you presented, even though you knew very little about my actual situation, apart from that sort of headline stuff, um, there was a sort of a catalytic action and that it crystallized how I saw the situation. And, and sure, don't complain. That's a great piece, great, great piece of advice. And dream. That's the other side of it. It's not just, ah, oh, stop moaning. I'm tired of hearing it. It's OK, stop moaning, stop complaining and actually have a you know, dream about doing the thing that would stop you from complaining. So that's that's a really important difference um, because your friends and family, they're quite they're like, yeah, yeah, OK, just stop. But, you know, somebody else might encourage you to take the to look at things in, in order to be able to, to, to take a bigger, bolder step in a um, in a different direction. So what was actually that catalyst for you exactly that time when you have finally looked into those fears you have finally said okay I'm done with just complaining and you know I will take that decision because you have done it you are now on the other side I'm now on the other side yeah. yeah so tell us a little bit how did that go for you and how do you feel now with that decision well it's still a it's still a, a work in progress of course of you know course. I made the decision just before the summer and then I sort of had the summer off in a way because I took a nice holiday and my family came over and um, so it's only been in the last few weeks really that I'm actually starting to look at how I use the time that I've bought myself and be structured about it and I think that's another thing we're coming on to in a uh, yeah, one in of a the bit, other yeah. options you see how this this whole sequence that you laid out in the five options that you gave to me is sort of actually a sort of a step-by-step -step, not a guide but it's actually um Process. You know, it's a process, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or a process. For I'm our so American proud friends. of us. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, but, but the the, yeah. the coming to the decision was about realizing in the end that nobody else was going to make that time for me. Nobody, nobody else could just fabricate. You know, I could have asked that question to you in the first place. You know, help. How do I get more time to do this thing? You can't make time for me. Nobody can make time for me to do those things. So it was about making that decision to what do I need to do to buy that time? And the decision was to lose the boring thing and to try and develop the interesting things and, and have that time in the meantime to find out where, where it takes me. Yeah, I think in a moment we will go actually to those habits and routines. But I have uh, one observation before we will do that. You, Marta, asked, you know, like uh, when it's that kind of a moment when you complain, 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 and then suddenly there is a breaking point. You're done with it. But I could also easily see how people fall into a complaining loop for years because you complain and complain and it becomes a habit. So then you actually have a habit of complaining and then you put this victim mindset more and more onto yourself and it's getting like an integral part of you. Uh, so I think that that's the problem because at the beginning, I think it's even healthy to complain sometimes a little bit, you know, just to, and right? The, and the other thing is that complaining, I think, keeps you in your comfort zone. It reinforces the comfort zone that you're in. Because it also kind of takes responsibility from the situation from you. For instance, you complain that your boss is like that or your job is so... Bo it's basically my job, my boss, my family, my whatever. It's like in this complaining process, it's always someone else that you complain about, but you don't complain. Well, sometimes you can actually complain about yourself as well, of course, mm -hmm. saying I'm stupid or I always do that or whatsoever. But in situations like this, many times we point fingers on the external factors that are happening around us, being a, be it a family member, a boss, a job, a situation. And it's convenient. It's a comfort zone because we don't have to look at ourselves and realize that actually we have the power to change that. And that power is fantastic, but that power comes with a huge responsibility because suddenly you have no one to complain about. It's actually on you. Mm -hmm. And that can be scary for many people. At yeah. least this is yeah. how I think. I'd agree. Yeah. So you have touched that breaking point and you have now tried for a few weeks this new lifestyle mm -hmm. where you have actually bought yourself time and you are developing what you actually want to do at that time. So how does it feel? Well, it feels really nice. Yeah. It, if, I mean, actually, I have evenings off after I've done my emails and my accounts and stuff. I can actually sit and enjoy an evening and not feel the pressure to, oh, I need to send that invoice. Oh, I didn't edit that file. Or, I, you know, I need to work through my taxes tonight. You know, I can actually enjoy, um, enjoy some 
free time as well, which is, you know, actual proper leisure, leisure time. So you have created space for yourself now yeah. uh, for, for yeah. more and more. Sp- OK, yeah. that sounds and, great. And every day I've got the opportunity for two or three hours to explore the things that I want to explore. Um, and one of those things about structuring that, which I've only just done in the last two or three weeks, is I've programmed. I have a little studio at home. That's where I work. And I have a computer and the computer's connected to the Internet because, you know, we need the Internet. I need to send files, download files and do emails and all this kind of stuff. Um, but I've now programmed my internet router to cut off all of the internet to the studio not just facebook or email or just like all of the internet access in the studio is locked off from 10 30 until one o'clock every day so that's two and a half mm. hours where i have no choice but to try things yeah because, and sometimes uh, yeah. that's yeah sometimes that's the mastering work which is you know jobs that I know I need to do other times it will be working on a new project or working with um, with Robin the other half of of Isan the, the the band that we're in um whatever that is and it's also there's there's no pressure so if I start something and it's not working I don't have to go oh god that was the only half an hour I've got this week to do anything yeah I can now say okay fine I'll come back to that tomorrow or I'll forget it there's another hour to play with and that's just, I mean, you, I remember many, many years ago, my, my good friend and, and former boss always said, you have to sort of buy your time off. You pay for that with money somehow. So you take a, a lower income, maybe. But what you get for that is the freedom to explore things. So as long as you're not putting yourself in some kind of financial jeopardy, I feel like what I've done is actually bought myself some freedom I'm still I'm not going to be hungry I don't think I'm not going to be cold or and neither is my son that's really really important but I've bought myself a couple of hours a day of freedom which at some point in the future will pay back whether that's live shows I'm playing a show in Italy with uh, with Robin in a couple of weeks you know that's income we will have money from releases hopefully in the future plus that accumulates over time we you know there's many different income streams that we could get with that time but you have to do something to have access to those income streams in the first place. And that's what I've bought myself. It's, so is it an investment? I don't know. But I, I like it. It feels good and it feels comfortable. It feels the right way to, uh, to be using my resources. So I love this because you have actually transitioned from complaining into seeing opportunities. So the way you describe it right now, the way you describe the time that you have bought yourself, it's pretty amazing to shift from. You said you told us that you've been complaining for a couple of years and now you are actually sitting here with the spark in your eyes you and telling that? yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah. telling us how you bought yourself freedom and how actually what you bought yourself can turn into so many different opportunities, which is beautiful. But you have already also sold us a pretty amazing tip for habits, this thing that you have set up for yourself to cut yeah. down the internet for two hours and a half a day, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. It's really, really amazing. I mean, I'm a, I get very easily distracted. I mean, that's, I think many people have that issue as many well. Many people have that issue. And, and one of my things would be if I'm working on a project and it's not going very well, then, I'll, oh, you know, and then, oh, well, there's an interesting, pist- interesting drum machine or synthesizer on YouTube. I'll watch a review of that for 20 minutes and then <laughs> another 20 minutes go, follow, you know, and by locking off the Internet for that period of time, I've, I've put the distraction monkey away in his cage. So that was uh, very insightful, Anthony. But I have just one more question for you regarding the, the fourth option, which was uh, habits and uh, routines. Do you have a morning routine? Because I think we talk about this here quite a lot. And uh, I always ask people and I hear this question, do you have a morning routine? Because Marta, she was talking a lot in the third episode about her morning routine. So I wonder if you have yours. Yeah, my routines are probably a bit too specific because I feel most comfortable when I'm in a routine than things that happen out of routine. So my routine is really specific when I have Elliot for a week, when I have my son for a week, then it's up at 6.20, make his breakfast, make his lunch, um, pack the bags, leave the house at 7.20, cycle down to uh, the school, drop him off just before 8 o'clock. And then if it's a Monday, it's a run. If it's a Tuesday, it's a swim. Run Wednesday, <laughs> swim Thursday, run Friday. And then in the weeks when I don't have Elliot, then the routine is starting at 8 o'clock when I just get out of bed and I either go for a run or a swim, depending on whether it's a Monday a Wednesday or a Friday. 
Oh man, and then, this is really organized. It's, I know it's a little, like I said, it's a little bit too much routine, but um, it just, you know, I feel most comfortable with that, and I know what I'm going to be doing. Um, and then it's home, put the coffee on, go into the studio, and then I've got this period where the internet. You know, I do half an hour of email just because I feel better if I can just clear a few simple, quick tasks. Then bonk, internet goes off while I'm halfway through an email, typically. And uh, yeah, then I'm then I'm working, and then for, and then the afternoons um, will be doing um, if it's yeah scheduled mastering work, so working on projects that I have to deliver, and then either picking Elliot up from school and I leave at sort of half past two, three o'clock, or if it's a week when I don't have him, then uh, just working until dinner time. So we are very much post morning routine by now, and I am so impressed. So <laughs> totally. Like, so you have. So, to... but what I was, yeah, it's like everything is a routine in my life. So, yeah. so, but have you always been this way, like like you're a routine guy, or has actually some experience put you into that it's a valuable thing to do routines? I think my experience of not really enjoying unplanned surprises has made me cling on to routine. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any like a clown in your childhood that scared you? <laughs> I don't know. Jumping out it's from a, good a box. Question. I think that's not something we're going to unpick in the next five minutes. So then let's yeah. let's just leave it there <laughs> because you are right. We actually have uh, five remaining minutes, and we would like to hear something about the fifth option we gave to you, which was surround yourself with like-minded, inspiring people. So basically. Be mindful about people you are choosing because it is said that you are like an average of five people you spend the most time with. And that's a difficult one, isn't it? That's a difficult. Yes, um, it is because it depends on where you are, um, mm -hmm. and um, and if you if you can't just surround yourself with the, those creative or inspiring people, then how do you go about finding out how to surround yourself with them? Um, but just generally, that's um, you know, as an expat in a, a strange place with. No immediate circle of, um, <laughs> yeah. You, then yeah. you have to just be open to finding them, and then then things happen. But I think you're right. I think that's really important. I just don't think that's an, an an easy one where you can just say, okay, today I'm going to surround myself with one extra creative person because they're not easy to find. So it's just about being open and receptive. Yeah, I, I think that uh, we gave some uh, tips for people, right, Marta? I don't know if you remember, but we said like if you cannot find in your immediate environment inspiring people for some reason then maybe start with some podcasts or books where you can listen to people that you could look up to as mentors or people who have actually achieved something that you would dream to achieve i think this is a very good start if you cannot first find those people around you what do you think mata so basically i was very very much thinking uh, like both are awesome like It's great. Even if you surround yourself with inspiring people, I think these inspirational people you can look up to, listen to or watch or something, that's, that's also great. But I was thinking how relevant was that option for you at that point of time in this moment of taking the decision? I think it was something to look forward to, having, you know, been in, being in a position to make that decision is having the freedom to, you know, there are creative people in Tvalesha. I'm lucky enough to know a few of them now. And then it's not just about knowing them, it's about being able to spend time with them and invest in, in that relationship as well. Because I think you're right, it can be inspiring to see what other people are doing on YouTube. People do their, you know, they show their creative process or they show, you know, inspirational methods or, or whatever it can be. But I think the real value comes from the resonance you get from of an actual feedback you know it's very much a one-way street which could get you started with things like podcasts and youtube but when you're actually working with somebody even if you're not working on the same things you can sort of fuel a sense of enthusiasm and um and sort of mutual inspiration even if you then end up going off and doing doing separate things mm -hmm. so in this uh, period of time where you have bought yourself some freedom and you have this uh, possibility of investment into opportunities have you decided to uh, use some of that time into building those relationships Yes, yeah, which is just saying yes to, to projects when they come along. Okay, I will just have a closing remark for this one because I think we have to close the show, which is, by the way, fantastic. But I think we also, what we meant in that option was also to try to check for people in our immediate environment that might be intentionally or unintentionally put us down. So for instance, if you want to become an entrepreneur and your friends are saying this is stupid, 
You know, it's like you have such a good job. You know what I mean. So sometimes you have people around you who don't support your dreams and actually exhaust you because of the fact that you have to like fight against them and explain yourself. Did you experience that kind of situation or actually here you didn't really have a problem? No, no, I've had people around who were encouraging and you know, didn't want to make a decision for me or help me make a decision, but certainly wouldn't be standing in the way of it and then mm-hmm. being, su- you know, entirely supportive of it. So, um, yeah, that, that includes, you know, friends and family and my, my sweet caster as well. So, um, you know, that I didn't have that as a, as, as a problem. But you're right, you have to find people who can... Yeah, and I think it's about this resonance. It's about f- feeling that somebody believes in you as well. Um, or believes in what you can do or the things that they don't know that you can do but you know that anybody can you just need somebody to say yeah people can do that kind of stuff so you could do it too yeah it's very important to have something like that I mean of course you can always be a fighter and a survivor and do it uh, despite (laughs) (laughs) everyone (laughs) you know around you but still if you have those people that believe in you and sometimes it's enough to have one so that's a remark to our listeners you can be a catalyst you can be that one person that sets somebody off on fire. So be that one person. Be that person, exactly. So thank you, Anthony, so much for being here with us today. Thank you. Thank you you for joining us for the Judgment Day. I think, Marta, we have passed. I think that now that I think about that you've named that the Judgment Day, I think you may have (laughs) invoke something bigger. (laughs) Maybe maybe we should call it Independence Day instead. Yeah, (laughs) it could be. But you know, uh, your Lucifer also had something to do with it, my dear. Next next time we choose Gabriel. Gabriel, yeah. (gasps) Yes. That would have been such an amazing name. Why didn't you come up with this one before? Or you could have signed your application with Gabriel. Because I was just... uh, shocked by Lucifer proposition that came from you so I couldn't come with Gabriel okay guys thank you so much thank you very much for listening and we will hear each other very very soon thank you Anthony for being here bye 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 you are listening to you've got five options radio show where we hopefully convinced you that five indeed is a magic number To catch up with our previous programs, apply to be our guest, send us your life challenge, or just to see how do we really look like, visit our website, the5options.com. We hope you enjoyed this episode and that you will come for more. That's all, folks! Du lytter til din lokale radio i Aarhus på FM 98,7 MHz og 89,5 MHz.